MIAA Monday rolls on to the special edition this Tuesday afternoon with Commissioner Mike Racy. Thank you as always for coming on and postseason for the fall sports yes. and everything going. Yeah, we're, we're right in the middle of it. Everything's good. Um, we're excited. We've got, got three teams in the football playoffs, uh, four teams in for women's soccer. Um, we'll find out uh, early next week how many in volleyball, but uh, – uh, it's been, been a great fall so far for the MIAA. We'll start with the MIAA football, and we talked about it last week. What was this going to shake out like? Um, got three teams in with Northwest, Washburn, and Nebraska Kearney. Kearney going to Super Region 4, and a little bit of a trade bringing Central Washington over to Super Region 3, I guess. How does the MIAA look at how all this kind of unfolded for the conference? Well, uh, you know, we, we got lucky. And, uh, you know, my, my mom and dad used to tell me that, you know, luck is uh, where hard work and preparation uh, meet and, and we'll take it. Um, but, yeah, we had, a, we had a few things break our way on, on Saturday with some losses uh, of, of teams that were ranked ahead of Washburn. And, uh, you know, that allowed, uh, allowed Washburn to, uh, to sneak in as our third team and the in the seventh slot in regional rankings, uh, uh, Carney in, in the sixth spot, and um, they they actually used a new tool that's available in NCAA playoff selections, where uh, a school that's ranked uh, for football in in slots five, six, or seven in the regional rankings, uh, they can they can move that institution into a different region if uh, if that movement. Uh, allows there to be fewer charter flights that have to be used in the in the playoff matchup. So they moved they moved Nebraska Kearney over into the West, and and they're matched up with a team in Colorado in the first round, and then and then obviously Northwest uh, uh, seed number three, and they're and they're hosting a playoff game on Saturday. Uh, Washburn traveling to Harding uh, in Searcy, Arkansas, this weekend. So. So we've got three games, uh, two in Region 3, one in Region 4 next week or this coming weekend. And, uh, you know, should be, uh, should be an exciting weekend of football. And we're, we're really excited that we've got three of the 28 playoff teams out of the MIAA. This is going to ask you because I think there's been a lot of maybe questions or people confused, especially with that new tool, Carney going into Super Region 4 and going that way. But maybe it's the other part of the team coming into Super Region 3 all yeah. the way out in Washington State. I guess how does this new tool work, and does, is it an advantage to have this new tool in place, do you think, to maybe allow, like, you know, getting Carney and Washburn both in to have a tool like this? Yeah, I think it's very, you know, it's a very positive development. Uh, that the Division II Championships Committee's approved. Yeah, uh, Central Washington, I think, surprised a few folks, uh, you know, thinking that it might be one of the Northern Sun schools that come come into our into our region and, you know, uh, uh, Minnesota institution coming this way. But, um, you know, the great thing for the MIAA, um, you know, if things, uh, things break the, ro the right way and we win a few games, you know, we could be looking at a, a Northwest uh, Kearney uh, semifinal matchup or even a championship game. And, and we've been fighting for that for a long time in, uh, in the MIAA. You know, there have been years where we've, we've had teams uh, that were a uh, couple of teams that were, were top ranked. And, and uh, you hate to see those teams beat up on each other in the region. So to, to have, uh, have the MIAA have uh, – uh, conference participants in the playoffs in two different regions, uh, you know, gives us a chance to see how how our teams fare against new competition, and uh, and and we'll keep uh, keep our fingers crossed that we keep playing good football and and good things happen the next couple of weeks. We talked about in the past just about you know the MIAA's you know record in, in bowl games and just going up against other conferences and the postseason the last several years Northwest other teams making a little bit of postseason runs just what I guess going back to what you said about you know potentially we could see Northwest and Kearney kind of see each other a after the regions is that good for the the league to have those possibilities happen instead of beating up on each other or 
or is that all just a good thing? Or is it kind of like an SEC thing where you do get like a Georgia, Alabama or LSU, Alabama type of thing? Well, first of all, I think it's great for our student athletes, uh, our student athletes, uh, you know, one of the things that they comp- they, they uh, I, complain is not the right word, but one of the things I hear from student athletes about our close schedule, they understand how competitive the conference is and every, every weekend's a battle, uh, but they like going to no, new places. They, you know, student athletes like to travel and, and visit and play in new places that they haven't been before. So, you know, what a great opportunity for the, the student athletes in, in Kearney to, to have a chance this weekend to go to Colorado, to go to Western Colorado, uh, to play a football game, probably in the snow, and um, and and you know to experience a, a brand new campus. So that that part of it's healthy. I think it's a great thing for Division two football fans. You know to see schools that aren't necessarily um, you know weighted down in a particular region just because that's where they have traditionally played. If the geography makes sense for a team to play in a different region and it. It saves the division money and it provides uh, a new a new matchup. Uh, I, I think fans understand that, and you know certainly fans that uh, follow teams in the MIAA or the Gulf Gulf South Conference or the you know the Lone Star or the GLIAC um, that have historically had multiple teams in the playoffs and and would like to see the chance someday maybe if their teams competing against each other in a national championship, this tool, you know, provides at least that opportunity uh, to, to, to take place. Kind of taking a look at the game this weekend, and then we'll move on to, you have Northwest hosting Central Washington, you have Washburn on the road at Harding, and then like you said, Nebraska Kearney out in Western Colorado. W- want to touch on uh, soccer too, Division Two women's soccer region coming out, just kind of looking at the uh, Region, like you said, four MIAA schools getting into a region. Uh, that number one, that's pretty impressive. To get four yeah. teams into an eight-team region from the MIAA, just uh, what what stands out to you about just what you see from soccer? I mean, this year, I mean, you have Northwest Missouri State making it, you know, an appearance in the soccer, you know, region, and I believe that's either the first time or the, you know the second time they've ever done that, and that, that just says something about just what the MIAA is again, too. Yeah, you know, you you have a. a you have a situation where Emporia and Central Missouri have battled, um, you know, close games, um, you know, all year, including the, you know, the conference uh, championship game, uh, won by Emporia State, 1-0. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a very strong conference uh, in women's soccer again this year. And we've talked about that before on this program, Chris, about the, the strength of MIAA women's athletics and whether it's soccer or volleyball or women's basketball or women's track and field, you know, there's just a very, very talented uh, um, student athletes that are on our campuses and, uh, you know, soccer, it's, it's going to be great. Um, uh, Central Missouri's, um, you know, hosting uh, a couple of games uh, on Friday and Poria State's hosting a couple of games. Um, and, you um, you know, uh, it's uh, it's going to be hard to get uh, you know get get an MIAA team to the Final Four. A school like Grand Valley uh, in Michigan is probably uh, waiting for uh, the school that comes out of our region. But uh, I like you know I like our schools how they've been playing, especially here near the end of the season. And um, I think uh, what you'll see in the regional tournament is. Probably similar to what we saw in the conference tournament. Great soccer, great battles, and close games to the end. We'll keep it rolling. MIAA volleyball gets set going tonight here at a little bit, a couple hours away. Um, well, I know I've talked about them quite a bit already, but Northwest Missouri State, they their volleyball team, they're hosting. They're the number two seed in the tournament. Um, top, you know, this, this tournament's going here, then Friday, then Sunday. Uh, I believe Sunday, if I have my dates right there, this you know, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Yep. Soccer was Friday, yeah. Sunday. There's just a lot of sports going on. Yeah. So everything just Starting thrown to together. Keep track. <laughs> uh, well, well, yeah, well, Friday, Saturday at the, we've got the quarterfinal matches to, tonight. And then the, uh, the top seed from the four winners, um, will host the, the semis and the championship on Friday, Saturday, the top seeds, UCM, um, 
the top four seeds, uh, really no, uh, you know, uh, no strangers to teams that we've been talking about all year, Chris. Uh, you've got UCM, you've got Northwest Missouri, you've got Washburn, you've got Nebraska Kearney. Um, you know, the last, uh, the last couple of years uh, when uh, NCAA Division II has had um, a fall NCAA championship, uh, Nebraska Kearney made it uh, to the final four. Uh, Washburn made it to the championship game. Uh, this year, UCM is the number one seed, um, and, and we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, Chris, I, I, I certainly uh, uh, am hopeful that we'll get uh, at least four teams uh, into the regional uh, NCAA volleyball tournament as well uh, when that's announced next week. And, uh, you know, as, as we've talked, we've had, we've had all four of those top-ranked teams in our tournament have been ranked in the top 10 uh, nationally uh, throughout the year. So uh, uh, like we just talked about with soccer, uh, MIAA women's volleyball probably never been stronger, never been more competitive than it, than it is right now. It's not so much for Northwestern Missouri Western, but we got to talk about it too is the Fort Hayes State men's soccer team. Uh, yes. Tr tremendous performance this year too, winning the GAC MIAA championship as well. Yeah, they did that this past weekend, and uh, the GAC uh, MIAA, uh, we have a partnership with that conference in two sports, uh, men's soccer and men's tennis, where uh, both conferences don't have a, a, enough institutions to meet sports sponsorship uh, alone, so we partnered, and, and through the work of both conferences, we've really helped preserve men's soccer and men's tennis as NCAA uh, division two sports in the Midwest. And, and we were fortunate that, uh, we had, uh, uh, Fort Hayes state and Northeastern state, uh, both out of the MIAA, uh, competing this past weekend for the, for the GAC MIAA, uh, postseason tournament championship and, and Hayes got the victory. And with that, yeah, the automatic qualifier, uh, to the NCAA tournament. How, how important can those partnerships between conferences be for for sports like, like you just talked about you know soccer men's tennis uh for missouri western lacrosse and the glvc uh, just how important are these maybe partnerships or at least working together to ensure things can run you know move forward and run smoothly yeah they're very important to have these opportunities where where schools can be affiliate members of a different conference like like missouri western and lacrosse um and, and being a member of the GLBC, the partnership that we have with the Great American Conference is really, it's really unique in all of college sports. There's, there's really no other example of, uh, in, in these sports of soccer and men's tennis where two conferences have come together uh, to sponsor that sport with, with full members, uh, you know, that are, are participating in each conference. Um, and then we've joined forces to provide this opportunity. Um, so it's uh, it's something we started three years ago. Um, I think it's been very successful. Um, I think there are a lot of other conferences that are kind of looking at what we're doing, especially when you're at risk of, of losing that sponsorship um, since you don't have six full members that are playing the sport. So um, it's unique, it's different. and. Uh, you know, I'm glad that the MIAA and the Great American Conference found a way to come together to do this, to form that alliance and, and help save uh, soccer and tennis for men's student athletes. I want to turn our attention a little bit to uh, International Student Athlete Week. Uh, we talked about that, I believe, last week or the week before, and it's this week now, just kind of the week to kind right. of celebrate um, the athletes that have come from all over the world to compete and you know and learn in the MIAA and just how much goes into making sure this week is an opportunity to shine a light on, on these student athletes that are coming from all over the globe well it's a bit um so it's been a heavy lift from the conference office a lot of the work has been done by Brenna Wynn our our director of uh, uh strategic communications and and our digital media she is uh uh, she put in a lot of hours working with our our communication directors on campus and trying to 
you know, learn more about each of these international student athletes, where they're from, uh, you know, what sports they play. And, uh, and, and we're trying to, um, you know, use our platforms, um, you know, whether it's Instagram or, or Facebook or Twitter, certainly our website, um, we're doing a lot of things this week to call attention uh, to our institutions and how many international student athletes they have competing and, and, and using some visuals and some other tools we have to, uh, to really shine a spotlight on, on, these, uh, on these special students. Um, you know, I think that these, uh, these student athletes that come from all over the globe, uh, Chris, they help enrich our campuses and our communities so much. Uh, um, you know, they're there to learn, they're there to be, um, uh, you know, good team members and to participate on teams. But I think they give so much back uh, to their teammates and to other students on campus and a chance to learn about um, you know where someone else is from and what their what their customs are and their traditions and um, and just learn a little more about that uh, and that that culture and that's what we're trying to do with International Student Athlete Week in the MIAA is just to to really celebrate these student athletes um, as we talked about I think a couple of weeks ago our celebration lines up with um, International Education Week and a, a week that has been identified by by both the um, the State Department and the Department of Education as a week to celebrate international education. Um, not only students that come here for education, but opportunities our domestic students have to go overseas and and to uh, to be exchange students or or to have a um, that type of a study abroad opportunity. So it's a great week uh, that we've kind of designated as uh, as NCAA International Student Athlete Week. We realize it's much bigger than than the MIAA and and uh, you know these these programs are celebrating all of international education. But we're we're doing a small part to to shine a light on our international student athletes and and really if. Uh, have gotten our schools and communities to help join in to to lift them up and and celebrate who they are. Absolutely, MIAA Commissioner Mike Racy joining me. And sir, I'll get you out of here on this um, next Monday. You guys are hosting a name here we are name, image, and likeness webinar. Yeah. Uh, for the MIAA student athletes, I, I know you posted yesterday kind of where the MIAA still sits among not just Division two conferences, Division right. one conferences in there too, with the name, image, and likenesses that have already went out so far since this came in less than six months ago. Right. Yeah, so we'll have our first seminar uh, uh, just um, uh, built and, 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 and uh, put together um, solely for our student athletes, a student athlete only webinar for student athletes at our MIAA schools will take place next Monday. Um, the webinar is being organized by our uh, name, image, likeness, compliance partner, uh, Empower You, uh, here in Kansas City. Uh, the, the webinar, uh, I think it's at noon, and we're encouraging all of our student athletes to, to log in and participate and be on there live if they can. If not, it'll be taped and we'll have an opportunity to uh, let our student athletes access and find that information. We have a big announcement Chris, I can't really share it on today's podcast. Uh, it'll come out tomorrow. Um, it's really national news uh, for the MIAA on the name, image, likeness front, and uh, we're excited about it. Uh, it allows us to be the first uh, NCAA Division II conference to have this type of opportunity, and um and our student athletes will benefit it, benefit from it immediately because it'll be part of um, Monday's webinar uh, that our student athletes will benefit from. So um, I'll just tease that a little bit um, uh, to let uh, everyone listening to this podcast to, to make sure they check out the MIAA website tomorrow and, and see our big name, image, likeness news. There's also going to be a big announcement tomorrow, Chris, about another uh, MIAA institution that's going to have an opportunity uh, to participate in a uh, Division II bowl game. Uh, so we'll we'll actually have four institutions uh, competing in postseason football, and 
and that news will uh, come out tomorrow as well. Uh, without giving anything away, I'll go back into the first part of the uh, <laughs> announcements for tomorrow. We've talked about a lot. MIAA trying to be out in front of name, image, likeness, and just anything related to Division Two. Is this another one of those things where it's just MIAA wanting to be out first and just kind of showing its student athletes, hey, we're here for you. We want you to be the best, and we're here to help you do that. Yeah, this is this is all student focused, student centered. It's uh, bringing resources and tools to our student athletes that will help them uh, develop their brands, uh, to find uh, new NIL opportunities, uh, to uh, kind of track and and monitor their NIL activities, and um, it's actually a, a partnership that will allow our our MIAA institutions when they're out recruiting and talking to prospective student athletes to show them another way that the MIAA is uh, the place where if a student is interested in in winning championships, getting a great education and developing and monetizing his or her brand, um, there's nowhere better in the country, any level to do all three of those things than an MIAA institution. So that's what the announcement tomorrow is just another uh, another way that we're trying to position our MIAA schools and our MIAA student athletes uh, to have advantages uh, in the name image like the space. Can't wait to see and hear more about the new name image and this announcement coming out tomorrow. And also there'll be four MIAA football teams in the postseason. Like you said, that bowl game will be announced tomorrow. We'll let everybody guess and see if it's their team that's going into the bowl <laughs> that's right. at, at, at that's this right. point. So. NYAA Commissioner Mike Racy, thank you as always for coming on. You bet. Good to see you again, Chris. Thanks. Take care.